Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Today's webinar is titled Investigation of Bracing to Unload Muscle and Knee Contact Forces for Knee Osteoarthritis Patients. My name is Christoph Iverson, and I work here at Anybody's Technology. Today, I will be the host of this webinar, and I'll be joined by my colleague, Bjorn Keller Ingelund, who is one of our R&D engineers here at Anybody. And Bjorn will join us during the Q&A session and help us out with answering your questions. In today's webcast, we have an external speaker who is PhD candidate Jonas Stolze from the University of Aalborg here in Denmark. And Jonas is going to give his presentation in a minute or so. But just before we start, I will give you a general introduction and overview to the Anybody Modeling System for those of you who is unfamiliar with the software or musculoskeletal modeling and simulations in general. So let's begin with having a look at what the Anybody Modeling System actually is. The Anybody Modeling System is a software that allows you to do musculoskeletal modeling and simulations. As input, it takes motion data as kinematics and forces, and it calculates the internal body loads as joint moments, joint reaction forces, and muscle forces. And here in the bottom of the screen, you can see a screenshot from the actual software, which can give you an idea of how the system actually looks. At the moment, anybody is used in a wide variety of areas and applications. And a few examples of this is movement analysis, product optimization design, the field of sports optimization, orthopedics and rehabilitation, and assistive devices as, for example, an exoskeleton. And the typical workflow in anybody could look something like this. You provide the recorded motion data as input, and then you use the body models which you or others have built. And then you provide some kind of environment which could be a special type of equipment or, for example, an exoskeleton. Then you can use anybody to combine, combine these things and solve the muscle recruitment and run the inverse dynamics simulations. This basically means that we go from motion to calculate the internal body loads and the interaction with the environment in some cases. You can then output the results and use this for some kind of post-processing with, for example, some finite element tool. But many users also closes this loop completely by doing some kind of design optimization and then run this cycle multiple times. This actually brings me to the end of this small introduction, and then I'll hand over the word and present the role to Jonas instead. Yep. So, yeah, uh, I'll present my PhD work from Marlborough University, um, which has been conducted in correlation with my two supervisors, Professor John Rasmussen and Associate Professor Michael Skibarnassen. Um, my PhD work was part of a, a bigger uh, project called uh, uh, individualized osteoarthritis intervention, um, which received funding from the Innovation Fund Denmark. So, as probably most of you already know, um, osteoarthritis is a chronic long term disease which causes uh, inflammation, stiffness, and pain to the joint due to degeneration of the soft tissues, such as the cartilage and, and the meniscus in the, in the, in the knee joint. Um, it can be caused by many different factors. It can be due to genetic factors. It can be initiated by previous ligament ruptures. It can actually be due to underloading of the joint. It can also be due to overloading of the joint. And uh, I will be focusing on the on the overloading parts. Um, so what I'm showing here is a musculoskeletal model with the ground reaction force uh, shown with the, the blue line, as most of you already have seen and worked with before. And since it's not following this neutral axis of the knee, it generates a, a moment around the knee joint, uh, which we often refer to as the knee adduction moment or CAM moment. And this is a, um, this this can generate a, an um, an offset in the the compressive forces in the in the knee joint. So it can actually uh, provides larger forces on the medial compartment on, than on the lateral compartment, and that's that's partly due to this. Uh, cam moment, and that's also why uh, most of the knee osteoarthritis patients they experience uh, osteoarthritis and and uh, most pain on the medial compartment. So it seems very obvious to to uh, to uh, counteract this moment with a uh, an opposite moment called the valgus moment. So that's why this brace that I've shown here in the picture is often referred to as the valgus brace, uh, which uses the uh, most often uses a three point leverage system. Um, with these three forces, F1, F2, and F3, 
uh, which combined generate this uh, valgus moment, which tries to counteract the knee adduction moment to unload the medial compartment. But the, the, the literature shows varying results with this intervention. Um, it can be due to that uh, maybe the, the brace um, actually um, uh, move uh, relative to the skin. So when you apply a moment and you have strapped something onto the leg, often the brace will just move relative to the skin uh, due to soft uh, tissue artifacts. So the moment will actually not be transferred to the bone, but it will just make the, the brace move um, if it's not uh, properly uh, uh, fitted to the leg. It might also be that the medial collateral ligament is, is actually too stiff to, to even gain any uh, uh, offload or unloading of the, the medial compartment. And if it actually happens that the, the valgus brace successively uh, unload the medial compartment, it actually just shifts the load to the lateral compartment. So that will experience a larger load than it, it was actually uh, uh, experiencing before the brace was uh, applied. And then it might happen that the patient will experience pain on, on this side of the knee because it's not used to these increased loads. So we thought maybe there's a, a, a better alternative to, to unload the knee than these uh, valgus braces. So the aim with the, the PhD work was to develop a subject specific knee brace to unload the knee joint for knee osteoarthritis patients. And by unloading, it means that we wanted to unload the knee completely and not just one of the, the compartments uh, in the knee joint. Um, so that brings us to the first study of, of three in, in the PhD. Uh, so how can we actually unload the knee if, if there's a better approach than the valgus brace? How do we find that? So we investigated how internal knee compressive forces, they depend on external moments. And we had a hypothesis that uh, muscle contraction, they contri contribute to internal knee compressive forces. So whenever you for example, flexes, uh, flex the knee, as shown here with the hamstring muscles, you induce, uh, or that contributes to, to the internal compressive forces. So if we apply an external uh, force or an external moment to the knee joint, um, then we can unload the hamstring muscles and through that un also unload the, the total compressive knee forces inside the, the knee. And the same goes for knee extension. Uh, we can unload the quadriceps muscles. And uh, it can actually be a little bit tricky uh, to, to identify what happens in the, um, w when we unload the, these muscles, or at least some of the muscles, because some of them are uh, biarticular, like the, the rectus femoris muscle. It, it spans both the, the hip joint and the knee joint. So if we apply an extension moment, um, we both unload the quadricep muscles, but also the rectus femoris muscle. And then maybe we'll see an effect in the, in the hip joint. So that's why we used the anybody to, to simulate these moments because that, that takes into account all these uh, uh, muscle uh, contributions. Um, so what we did was that we had um, uh, gate data for 10 healthy subjects, um, uh, which was provided by uh, Sebastian Skels, uh, a colleague at the Albo University, and we applied external moments to sort of simulate a, a brace in silico, so to sort of simulate the, the effect from a, a brace moment uh, and we apply 40% of the muscle moments or what the muscles did when walking uh, normally without any intervention to see if that reduced the joint loads and how much it reduced the joint loads. And we applied moments in the sagittal planes um, in the lower extremity, so hip extension flexion, knee flexion extension, and ankle plantar dorsiflexion. We also applied moment in the coronal plane, so hip abduction, adduction, knee varus valgus to sort of simulate the effect from a, a conventional valgus brace and then angle eversion inversion and i'll just show you an example here uh, how it was, uh, worked in anybody so this is the knee flexion extension moment so in whenever needed in the anybody model the knee um, uh, there was applied an external moment around the knee joint 40 percent of uh, what the, the muscles were, were originally uh, providing uh, during the gait cycle so of course this is not realistic because the moment just switches in and out whenever needed, but it was more to investigate the effects uh, on these different moments uh, on the knee compressive forces. So what I've shown here is the total compressive loads as percentage of body weight. You have seen this kind of graph before, I could imagine. Um, so this is just a normal walk without any intervention from a heel strike to toe off. And if we look at all the moments in the coronal plane, we can see 
they don't really do any effects on the uh, on the knee compressive forces. Um, it might have had an effect on the medial and lateral forces, but not on the total compressive forces. Whereas if we apply the moments or uh, look at the effects of the moments in the sagittal plane, we can see that it actually reduces the, the two peaks. Uh, if we take a look at the hip flexion extension, uh, the gray curve, we can see that it actually reduced both peaks. Um, if we look at the knee flexion extension, we can see it mostly reduces the first peak and a little bit the second peak. And then the angle plantar dorsiflexion reduces the second peak a lot and not uh, during any effect on the first peak. And that's due to the gastrocnemius muscle is uh, is unloaded. Uh, so gastrocnemius muscle is also in, in a biarticular muscle that spans both the ankle joint and the knee joint. So if we apply a moment around the ankle joint, we actually see an effect on the knee joint because the, the gastrocnemius muscle also spans the, the knee joint. So then we have seen what effect these different moments uh, are doing. Uh, so we can conclude, and uh, or at least we can uh, sum up with the study one, that muscle contractions, they contribute to the joint compressive forces because when we all uh, unload the, the muscles, we also see a, a reduction in the joint, joint compressive forces. And as I mentioned, the first peak is mostly affected by knee and hip compensation, whereas the second peak uh, is, uh, is mostly affected by ankle compensation. So if you want to reduce both peaks, you could uh, add a, a brace on both the knee and the ankle, but it might be a little bit tricky to make them uh, work together. Um, so it might be necessary to only uh, to, to apply one of the, the, the moments at a time. Uh, the results have been uh, published uh, in the International Biomechanics Journal um, in this uh, paper here. And just to sum up the, the, the study one, then a take home message could be that the muscle compensation might be an, a more efficient approach for joint load reduction than when we compensate for the knee adduction moment uh, um, by the conventional valgus brace. So that leads us to uh, the second study where we wanted to uh, design a, a brace prototype that uses this uh, knee extension moment to reduce the first peak. Um, and we it's actually not a new uh, technology. It has been seen, for example, with the levitation brace, which is a passive brace designed by spring-loaded technology. Um, that the, the springs that has been uh, built into the frame here uh, generates an extension moment due to this spring line here. And th this uh, brace applies an extend, ex uh, extension moment all the time uh, as function of the knee flexion angle. So the more you flex the, the knee, the larger uh, extension moment it provides. Um, but it also sets an upper limit of how much extension moment we can actually apply because when we uh, just walking normally uh, during the swing phase, you wouldn't be able to swing the leg if, if this moment is too large. And if you want to sit down, then it will also be uh, uh, yeah, interfering with the, the knee flexion uh, of the knee. Another example is the Ascent Brace, uh, which is an active brace from Rome Robotics. Um, it uses air actuation here in the, the, the joint or the um, where it's the, uh, uh, connected uh, between the, the two uh, uh, brace cuffs, and then it's connected to a backpack because it needs the uh, actuation, the uh, bat batteries and, uh, and the control unit. So it's more into the exoskeleton, uh, that whereas the levitation brace is a very simple, slim brace. Um, and the, the ascent brace from Rome Robotics is also uh, quite expensive. It costs around $7,000. So it's a, it's a rather expensive uh, choice compared to the levitation brace. Um, but are any of these subjects specific? That's a bit hard to say, but because of course the frame can be custom made based on circumference uh, measurements of the shank and the thigh. But it's hard to know, at least for the, the ascent brace, if, if the applied moment is actually a subject specific or if it's just a, a, a generic moment that it, it, applies, it applies whenever needed. So we wanted to look more into which people are, are suited for this kind of, of, of brace intervention and, and how should the moment be applied. Uh, so we're sure that we get an individ individual treatment. So as I mentioned, we wanted to have our brace prototype to be individually adjustable and it should only apply the, the extension moment during, during the first peak, uh, so in the early stand space. 
And the aim was not to use any actuators for applying the moment. So we wanted to store potential energy in springs, for example, like the, the levitation brace does. But what type of brace, oh, sorry, what type of uh, springs would be a, a, a good choice for this? Um, the, the levitation brace uses something similar to a tension uh, spring where it uses this string uh, around uh, to, to apply the extension moment. But we think that it depends on the size of the moment and also the shape uh, that, that we need to compensate. So we, uh, we had a healthy subject uh, to, pr to um, perform uh, five gate trials. And we analyzed that in, in anybody. And then we plotted the mean muscle moment. So this plot I will refer to uh, quite a lot of times during the, the presentation. It's uh, the, the uh, muscle moment around the knee joint and uh, negative is flexion and plus is extension as function of the knee flexion angle. And uh, the orange dots here mean, uh, um, uh, illustrates the, the beginning uh, until, the, until the end of the an uh, analysis. And I will try to explain the graph uh, by means of this uh, uh, compressive load graph, as you already know. Uh, so as percentage of, of gate cycle, you can see that the stance phase is mostly here on the left side of the, the dotted line and then the swing phase here on the right hand side. And then as, as I mentioned, the orange dot here is heel strike and then you um, uh, have the first peak uh, compared to, uh, similar to the, the compressive force, which uh, peaks around here. And then you have the, the mid stance of the, of the graph and then you have the second peak around toe off. Um, so these two peaks of the knee muscle moment corresponds well with the, the two peaks in the in the total compressive load. So it seems like uh, um, uh, potentially that it, we can reduce the, the the compressive loads if we reduce these peaks in the the knee muscle moment as well. And then if we only look at the first peak, which is where we are focusing, we can make this regression line that we refer to as the quasi stiffness line. It's it's a term from uh, from exoskeleton world, but it's actually just to to illustrate the the torque stiffness that we need to apply to compensate for this uh, first peak of the knee muscle moment. Um, and then maybe you think that okay, maybe this subject just had uh, coincidentally had a, a very nice peak uh, as the first peak, uh, but we also looked at the the uh, the gate data of the 10 healthy subjects in the, the first study, and they also showed this uh, behavior in the knee muscle moment. So it seems like it's a, a general uh, behavior in when you do just normal walking. So when we have this linear uh, talk that we need to compensate, it seems like an obvious choice to have the just apply a torsional spring to the to the knee brace. Um, but it would be rather bulky to have these fairly large uh, uh, torque springs uh, sticking out because it's a quite large moment, at least for this subject, it's around 45 Newton meters that we need to compensate during no normal gates. So um, it seems like we uh, the, the obvious uh, more efficient and optimal choice is the one inspired from the levitation brace, where we have, uh, this is a prototype design in, uh, in SolidWorks that we did. And down here you can see we have a small spring uh, so a bit similar to the levitation brace where we attach it to a pulley and then a string goes through this uh, brace uh, system. So if this uh, string is locked and you, so up here we have an activation mechanism which can lock the string here. And if the string is locked and you flex the knee, you will induce a force in the string because it pulls in the spring down here and you will apply a force to this point which is distributed in, the, in these two linkages which are yeah these two that's sticking out posteriorly on the knee um, and this will generate a moment an extension moment around the knee joint and then if the activation lock uh, or sorry if the activation mechanism is unlocked you can actually just flex the knee as you want to uh, freely so uh, so everything is controlled up here and um, then we need to figure out when we need to activate this activation mechanism. And the, again, I'll show you this muscle moment plot where we have the, where it, uh, the first peak actually starts around zero Newton meters. And of course, there's an angle down here that corresponds to this value. And this is the activation angle. 
So whenever the knee reaches this activation angle, this, the, the brace will uh, switch in and uh, the activation mechanism will activate. And then it applies an extension moment during the first peak. And then when it reaches the activation angle again, it just switches off. Um, and then it leaves the, 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 uh, the brace unlocked in the second peak and the swing phase. And we modeled uh, a very simple uh, brace, uh, uh, the, the same approach or the same concept we model in anybody, where we had the, the two linkages here and a string uh, here, um, which um, illustrates the spring stiffness um, line here, which applies the moment in these two linkages. So we could vary these two lengths of the linkages, and we could also vary the, the stiffness of the spring to find the optimal uh, brace setting to compensate for this particular moment, for this particular subject. And we did that with a parameter study where we varied the, the, the three variables. You could also make an optimization study within anybody, but since we wanted to actually make experimental uh, tests in the uh, afterwards, we had to, fear to, to specify um, which spring stiffnesses we had available to, 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 uh, to try to test in the, in the laboratory. So we, we had a, a, these discrete values for the spring stiffness. And then we choose the optimal brace parameters. Of course, we can choose those based on peak knee compressive force. We can also choose them based on impulse or other uh, design uh, measures. But we chose the, the peak knee compressive force, the first peak uh, uh, reduction. Um, so the, the brace parameters that, that reduce the first peak most efficiently. And you can see when we apply the, that brace inside anybody, uh, the red curve uh, is the brace moment applied to the knee. Um, and the, the dark blue curve is still the, the muscle moment. And then the light blue is the muscle moment during bracing. So when the, the, the brace has uh, been uh, applied in anybody, the brace moment will reduce the first peak of the uh, knee muscle moment. And we look at the, the knee compressive forces, and as is expected, the first peak was reduced uh, uh, also like the first peak of the knee muscle moment, and the second peak was unaffected, as we expected also. This is only simulation, so the, 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 the brace we simulated in anybody was rigid bodies, and uh, there's a rigid connection between uh, the, 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 uh, the leg and the brace. So, of course, this is not, uh, it's an ideal uh, situation where, where everything is transferred to the leg without any uh, slack or, or soft, uh, soft tissue artifacts. But of course, we also wanted to see the effect in real life. So do experimental study of the, the knee brace. So we've made the prototype brace, which is this nice and slim brace prototype you see here. It, it became a little bit bulky, but uh, yeah, this, this was just to illustrate the, the effects of, of this type of intervention. Uh, the two blue parts here in the SOLIDWORKS model is based on the surface scan of the leg, which is the, the transparent part that you can see. And the, they are 3D printed as these white components in the, the real prototype. And the two... Uh, uh, brace cuffs are connected with oak hinges, which are commercially bought. Uh, they are designed to, to follow the knee kinematics during knee flexion. Then uh, the bottom part um, consists of the spring. And then in series with the spring, we have attached a, a, a force transducer, which consists of an aluminum piece with two 90 degrees angled uh, string gauges, which are connected in a Whitstone bridge and then through a, an amplifier board here. And it sends the signal up to the top part where we have an Arduino board, or actually two, an Arduino Uno and an Arduino Nano. Um, and you can also see here there's an electric motor, a stepper motor, which is used to lock and unlock the activation mechanism. So it's not completely without uh, actuators as the, we had an, uh, as an aim in the beginning, but it's still applying the, the moment uh, passively. Um, so um, these... All these wires are just to, to communicate between the boards and uh, uh, one is uh, sensing the, the forces from the, the spring force in the force transducer down here to send the signal to the motor to know when to activate and deactivate the, the brace during normal gait. So we strapped the brace onto a, a healthy subject. Uh, we measured kinematic data based on the, the uh, uh, markers here. 
and we measured the surface EMG of several muscles, but the ones that we were mainly uh, concerning about was the rectus femoris muscle and the two vasti muscles, the vastus medialis and vastus lateralis, um, because those are the muscles that we want to compensate for with the applied knee extension moment. And you can see an example here. <coughs> I don't know if you can hear it, but the, the electric motor is switching in and out all the time for it for each step. And then during the early stance, the first peak of the knee muscle moment, uh, the extension moment is applied. <clears throat> yeah, and um, as you can see here, the EMG uh, signal of the vastus medialis is as percentage of the MBIC as a function of the percentage of the stance phase. We have different curves. The, the red line is normal walk without any brace intervention at all. The case zero is uh, the brace strapped on to the leg, but without any uh, activation. So it's just dead weight on the, the leg, which makes sense that it increases the, the signal a little bit uh, of the, the vestus medialis because it's not doing any intervention. And then all the spring stiffness is here. We, we tested uh, five uh, different spring stiffnesses. Nine means nine newton per millimeter. Twenty is twenty newton per millimeters, and so on. And it seems like, as we expected, that a higher stiffness of the spring uh, decreases the the peak signal of the vastus medialis more and more. Um, so that's as we expected, because the extension moment will increase with the spring stiffness. And then if we look at the vastus lateralis, we can actually see that all the brace conditions were higher, had a higher peak than the normal walk without the brace, which is shown here. Um, it showed at least that the higher spring stiffness decreased the peak, but the reason why it's above the, the baseline might be due to the brace was uh, pressing on the surface uh, electrode uh, of the vastus uh, lateralis uh, muscle. So that's definitely something that we need to take into account when we design a, a prototype that we want to investigate the muscle activi activation uh, effect on. Then we need to make sure that it's not interfering with the, the electrode because that can uh, disturb the signal. But but at least it showed the correct um, approach that the that um, that the peak signal is reduced with a higher spring stiffness. This is just to show the average of the medial, vastus medialis and lateralis combined, so the, the average signal. So it has the same trend as, as we saw before, so a, an estimation of the, of the vasti muscle activation during the, the braced conditions and the normal walk. And then if we take a look at the rectus femoris muscle activation, we can see again, like the vastus lateralis, that all the brace conditions were above the baseline, uh, normal walk without any intervention. Um, and it might make sense that that uh, we see a larger uh, peak signal in this muscle because there are more weight that the, the muscle needs to to carry. So maybe it's it needs a more slim uh, brace design to to get the, the rectus femoris muscle activation uh, reduced um, below the the no brace uh, uh, condition. So. Overall, the, the tests were positive. We could see a reduction, at least in the rectus, uh, oh, sorry, the vastus uh, medialis and also the vastus lateralis when we increase the stiffness. But how is this affecting the internal compressive forces? That uh, that was something that we used anybody to investigate because, as I mentioned, we we um, we measured the kinematics with the markers and. Uh, then we uh, exported the the soft so the, so the SolidWorks model into anybody with the, any export for SolidWorks add-in, and then we applied the measured spring force that we uh, measured with our uh, force transducers inside anybody to to um, uh, yet yeah, to to actually know the the applied brace moment inside anybody. So this is based on the the experimental data that we collected in the laboratory, and this is shown here. So you can see the brace is active in the early stance, and then it just lets the, the knee uh, swing freely. So right at the heel strike, and actually the, the brace activated a little bit before the activation angle to make sure that the, the string was uh, um, tightened and reducing the slack in the system when we, when we actually uh, hit the ground. Um, 
So the brace was ready to to apply the extension moment right in the moment where it needed. And all these uh, purple dots that you can see around the 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 thigh and the shank are connection the 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 uh, connection points between the brace and the leg. So we see that the knee compressive forces inside that anybody predicted based on the the applied uh, brace moment was actually uh, reducing the first peak um, for uh, for almost all the the at least all the active um, uh, brace conditions. The the K zero uh, didn't have any influence, which was expected because that's just yeah the brace strapped on without any uh, intervention. And then we can see that the the actually the K 70 so spring stiffness of 70 performed best here on the first peak uh, compressive force so we, we use that as uh, in our muscle moment plots um, it, it almost showed the same for the k100 but uh, we can see that the k70 brace condition applied around 10 newton meters uh, from the brace so it reduced also the first peak muscle moment uh, with around 10 newton meters so the dark blue curve is just normal walk without any intervention, and then the light blue is the during bracing. And that makes sense that we see a reduction in the, the first peak knee compressive force when we see a reduction of the uh, first peak knee muscle moment. So the findings of this second study was that we reduced both the EMG and knee compressive forces uh, with our brace prototype. Uh, all the results are published in this paper in the Journal of Biomechanical Engineering. But how is the in influence on pain actually with this brace. We didn't really know that because we were only tested on a healthy subject. So we needed the NeoA patients to analyze this. So that's what the third study was uh, concerning about. We wanted to know who is actually suited for this intervention. So it was it seemed like the, the subject, healthy subject in uh, study two was uh, um, uh, suited for this kind of intervention. But we didn't really know if uh, knee osteoarthritis patients, they walk differently. So we needed to analyze that before we could say that, that this, uh, this is a successive brace for, for knee OA patients. So we recruited six patients just to do a small uh, uh, patient group and investigate uh, how they, uh, their knee muscle moment plots they looked like and if they were actually suited for this kind of intervention. And subject one seemed like it was uh, has a, a fairly large first peak in the knee muscle moment around 20 Newton meters. So it seemed like there's a potential there. And also subject two, it actually has a little bit larger uh, um, first peak uh, knee muscle moment. But then if we look at subject three and four, they have very small first peaks in the knee muscle moment. So they might not be suited that, that well for this kind of intervention where you apply an extension moment. Maybe they're more suited for a conventional valgus brace to, to unload the knee. Um, so that's something that maybe should be taken into account when, when you uh, prescribe a, a brace, uh, look at the, the, the gait behavior. And then the subject five and six, they have even larger uh, first peak knee muscle moments. So they would probably be very suited for this kind of intervention, but it would require quite a, a robust knee brace to, to, to compensate almost 60 Newton meters. So that's that could be a little bit of a challenge if, if they want a slim brace and still uh, compensate this large moment. Just to have uh, some um, uh, reference, so when when we did the the same simulation of the, the brace inside anybody where we had these rigid bars and the rigid connection to the leg, we could see that the subject one had a first peak knee compressive force reduction of 19%. So uh, it seemed like the, the subject was quite suited for this intervention as we expected. And then if we looked at subject three, under ideal uh, uh, circumstances, the, this subject only experienced a first peak knee compressive force reduction of 4%. So it would be barely nothing, uh, no effect uh, in, in real life um, since this is ideal uh, connections. And this shows the the, the necessity of, of analyzing the subjects before prescribing the, the, the brace, at least this type of brace. Then we took one of the, the NeoA patients and uh, strapped on the, the brace as we did for the healthy, the healthy subject in, the, in study two. And the same behavior was actually seen for the, the vastus medialis uh, uh, muscle activation. 
now the the blue curve is a placebo trial so the the brace was strapped on as uh, normally but the, there was um, a gear removed without the patient's knowledge so the patient thought that this uh, uh, the brace was still activating as normal but uh, it actually had the same um, um, uh, intervention as the k0 so it didn't do anything and that's also seen on the 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 two muscle activation peaks here but the patient expressed that he, uh, that the person could actually feel that the, the brace was uh, assisting uh, compared to the k0 so that actually shows the 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 importance of having a placebo trial because if you only evaluate the pa the person's uh, or the patient's uh, evaluation of the brace you could actually see that the patient thought that the brace was doing uh, something to the uh, and maybe he just felt that oh now the everything is fine because the the motor is running but it actually didn't do anything so that's very important to include in in patient trials um and then we had the three uh, spring stiffnesses that we tested and we could see that the the peak signal was reduced with a, a higher stiffness as as we saw in study two for the healthy healthy subject again we saw the same trend in the vastus lateralis all the brace conditions were above the the baseline the red curve but again we saw reduction in the the peak signal with an increased stiffness so that's positive at least that the brace had an effect uh, as we expected again the the average uh, of the two vasti muscles are shown where we see that the the, the largest stiffness was uh, at least uh, below the the baseline um, again the rectus femoris muscle was activated more during all the brace conditions uh, as as we also saw for for the subject in in study two so it seems like the 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 two experimental tests are quite good aligned with each other for for both the healthy subject and the the patient again we looked at the knee compressive forces in anybody where we exported the the brace and we can see that the the, the spring stiffnesses the largest spring stiffnesses they reduced the 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 first peak knee compressive forces uh, quite quite a lot. Um, the the case zero uh, we saw uh, if we investigate the uh, the knee muscle moment we can also see that around the brace applied around ten newton meters based on the the measured spring forces and the muscle moment was reduced all also around ten newton meters. Um, so that seems like the brace had the the expected effect. However, it should be mentioned that the patient was walking with quite a straight leg when wearing the brace, which we can see here on the knee flexion angle. So the, the knee flexion angle peaks uh, a lot lower at a lot lower angle than uh, compared to the baseline without the brace. So that also has an influence on the, the knee compressive forces, um, because if the knee is not flexed, it, the, the extension muscles are not working that hard. and, and that, it might reduce the, the internal compressive forces. Um, so that's something that should uh, be very emphasized that when, when testing these braces, that the patient should walk as normal as possible. But um, the patient complained a little bit about the pressure around the knee, which uh, um, uh, was a little bit irritating since the, they are more sensitized to, to pain than the healthy subjects. Um, so that's very important to, to look at the, the knee flexion angle in this, in this kind of intervention at least. So to uh, sum up the, the findings in study three, it showed that the prototype had a potential to reduce the peak EMG and peak knee compressive forces, in, like in this uh, second study, at least for some patients. It's very important to, to take into account that it's not all patients, at least for this small patient group that we investigated, that not all patients are, uh, are suited for this kind of intervention. Um, after each trial with the patient, we uh, asked the patient to, to uh, uh, evaluate the pain on a VAS score, and we didn't see any influence in pain uh, during the, the, the prototype testing. It might be due to that it's very short period that the patient is wearing the, the brace, so it probably needs uh, long-term studies to see an effect in pain uh, with this uh, brace intervention. And we also saw that the placebo trials are very important for when when testing the brace uh, because yeah, as i mentioned the patient thought that the brace was doing something and he felt that it do, did something but it actually didn't so um, a take home message for study three is that an applied knee extension moment in the early stance phase has the potential to reduce knee compressive forces in knee OA patients 
but not all patients are suited for this treatment. And then future work in this project is that we only tested one neo patient. So of course we need more patients to do any, uh, to draw any general conclusions. That's, uh, that's very obvious. Um, if we want the brace to be applicable for more activities than just normal gait, it also requires more advanced control. So for example, the, the ascent brace by um, Rome Ro Robotics, uh, it needs to switch between activities. So you have a smartphone and you can switch between normal gait, stair uh, climbing, uh, sit to stand, and then that needs to be uh, specified before the brace actually knows when to, to activate. Um, so maybe we can uh, gain uh, information based on uh, sensors on the leg that can be used to identify the, the subject's uh, intentions. Uh, so it doesn't need to be uh, explicitly uh, um, identified which kind of activation the person needs to do, but the brace can actually identify that based on sensors uh, on the on the brace or the leg. So that's uh, something that can be uh, developed in the future. Right now, the, the prototype is very bulky and heavy, so of course we need to make a slim design for long-term studies, but it's also necessary to apply a, a fairly large moment. We saw that some of the NEOA patients was all, almost uh, uh, above, uh, it was at least above 50 Newton meters, so it's very large moments that uh, that we work with in this kind of brace. Um, so it's 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 a com uh, it, it's very challenging to have a slim brace which can apply these these kind of moments. And then we experienced vertical migration of the brace. Uh, so it's very common that that the brace is is sliding down during uh, activities. Even though the brace cuffs were based on on surface scans of the leg, we still saw that the brace was sliding a little bit down. So that's very challenging to to avoid that um, when we apply these kind of forces then it, it moves the brace all the time um, so that's also something that needs to be taken into account when when designing knee braces and then lastly i would like to acknowledge uh, my some of my colleagues uh, sebastian for sharing the models in uh, in the first study i would like to thank the innovation from denmark for the fundings and i would very like to thank peacocks in newcastle in uk for assistance in prototype development and especially Anderson and Christina, my two colleagues at Albert University for assistance in the laboratory. And then I'm open for questions in the Q&A session. So thank you very much for this interesting presentation, Jonas. I'll just make myself the presenter once again. <laughs> yeah, so just before we go to the Q&A session, I would just like to say a few words about our online resources and the upcoming events. So if you want to know more about Anybody Technology, then you can go and check out our website, anybodytech.com, where you can find different events, special dates, and also a full publication list of studies using the Anybody Modeling System. You can also check out anyscript.org, which is our community website for people using Anybody. And here you can find multiple online resources as our wiki page, several blog posts, and links to our repository sites. And it's also here our forum is located. And here you can go and ask questions and get help from fellow Anybody users. If you are attending the uh, annual meeting of the Orthopedic Research Society in Tampa, Florida, here from February 4th to 8th, then you can stop by booth number 146 and have a talk on musculoskeletal modeling. Then we will be there. And I would also like to point your attention to an upcoming webcast called Automatic Ergonomics, Whole Body Motion Analysis and Physical Human Robot Interaction. It will be held on February 28th, and the registration will open shortly through our website. And otherwise, you can keep an eye out on our social media sites and upcoming email invitation. Last but not least, if you have any questions or you want to meet off or you are just interested in trying out a version of the software, then please feel free to send us an email at sales at anybodytech.com. And if you have any follow-up questions regarding this webcast or any of the previous ones, then please feel free to send me an email at ki at anybodytech.com or reach out to me through LinkedIn. Then I just want to thank you for the attention, and then we have time for a few questions.